Okay, so welcome everybody and thank you for joining me. I appreciate your presence and appreciate your um, wanting to be here and be present and to try to kind of cultivate um, your your skills of coming back to presence time and time again. And again, let me say Happy New Year and uh, wishing you, um, actually we're going to talk about happiness as opposed to meaning purpose and meaning that's an important part of um of, of the lesson today and that'll be part of one of our first meditations <clears throat> and before i forget i didn't put a slide in here but i will make sure i send it to you folks i'm going to do another class another six week class it will be starting on thursday february 1st um, at noon, so basically almost an hour, you know, from 12 to 12.50. Um, and it'll be a six-week class. Um, and it's like last year called Mindfulness Building the Habit of Presence. Um, so you might want to take that as a refresher. You're welcome to do that. Um, I always try to look for some new stuff to put into these. So, But it's essentially the same. So we will cover the that? starting with a... See what? breath sitting meditation and um going into uh, oh, look in the email that you sent her a body scan let's see hearing some background noise so i'm going to mute you all but you can unmute yourselves if you need to so anyway that's coming up um i do have a flyer i'm going to put that on lms so if you uh, it's not on there yet but Today or tomorrow, I'll have that posted on LMS. And if you search for mindfulness, building a habit of presence, you'll find that. Um, I'll also try to remember to send out a, a flyer to, to you all um, when I send out the slides to today's um, class. So anyway, let's um, move on. So Let's start with a mindful minute, as we often do, kind of a pause practice. And let's, for today, let's just kind of, as we breathe and as we feel our breath, taking full breaths now, lengthening the inhale and the exhale, what are you aware of? Okay. Just kind of asking yourself that question. What are you aware of right now? Of course, there's no right or wrong answer, but you might notice things like what's going on in the body, what's happening in the mind, what's your emotional state. What are you aware of as you begin to slow down, deepen your breathing? And then you might also ask yourself, What's important right now? What's important to you right now? What's going on maybe today in your home life, work life, family life, whatever it might be. What's important to you right now? Just sort of bringing that, what comes up? And as we do this, sort of representing the values and intentions that we might have for the day or for the beginning of the year. And let's take another last full deep breath. And as you exhale, we'll finish this quick pause practice of awareness. And, uh, and again, welcome. And um, as we go through this, feel free to give me some feedback about any of the practices or if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself or of course you can use the chat feature. Um, but part of what we're doing is when I ask you, you know, how's your practice going? How's your formal practice? How's your informal practice? Um, what do you say to yourself? 
when you ask yourself that question, how has your practice been going? Are you judging yourself? Does the inner critic kind of come up and say, oh, I really haven't been doing too well, haven't been fitting this in, and I'm feeling quite mindless lately, and, uh, you know, kind of the, the finger comes out and sort of, you know, if, if that's happening, um, that's okay. You know, it's part of the, the lesson is to be aware of that, to notice when we do that to yourself, when we kind of should on ourselves. Um, <clears throat> and so part of the whole lesson today will be on how do we kind of change that inner critic to an inner coach. And so um, the lesson, kind of the mini lesson, um, is, is just that, to notice, are you being kind to yourself? Are you being critical or somewhere in between? Um, and remembering that our mindfulness practice has a lot to do with being accepting and being good and being, remember those attitudes of mindfulness? They're, they're all very important to how we treat ourselves. And so the more we can bring kindliness or friendliness into our own practice, the more the chances are, are going to be that our own practice is going to be, you know, I, I even hesitate to use the word successful, but will be what we want it to be, will we'll help us derive some of the benefits. And that's what I want to be thinking about. What is it that you want uh, from your practice? Uh, but before I get into that, so this last point here, the bringing an attitude of friendliness, uh, this is a Tara Brock quote, uh, that a key predictor of whether mindfulness will be rewarding or a struggle is your attitude of friendliness. So to get an idea of how mindfulness will work for you, reflect on how you generally treat yourself, especially when you're anxious or stressed. This opens the door to how you can nurture your attitude of friendliness. And again, it's not, it's not about saying to yourself, oh, I should be this way or that way or better to myself, but it's just simply being aware of what are some of those conditioned patterns of how we treat ourselves and you know if they are a little bit critical self-critical and if they are kind of like you giving yourself a hard time this is probably a key intention to maybe get in touch with and the intention might simply be to just to, to not give yourself a hard time especially when it comes to your mindfulness practice and when you do the meditation and how those meditations go, uh, because part of what we're doing is we're just we're 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 not really trying to improve ourselves. I'm going to bring up a couple of quotes in a few minutes, but we're just really trying to make this work for ourselves so that we can accept ourselves as we are and we can discover the goodness that's already there. That's really important. OK. Now, um, before I move on to the why we meditate and the intentions, just want to remind you, oh, I did put this in here. See, <laughs> I forgot that I did this. Um, so this is the class that's coming up um, Thursdays, starting February 1st, six weeks, register on LMS. And then also to remind you about the M Life app that is out there. You can find the registration if you're not already registered for that on that link there. Uh, Carol on well-being is our EFR provider. Um, it's a new address. The old addresses still get redirected towards that. So, but on that homepage, you'll see M Life, and that's where you can go to to register. Uh, and it's free for us through the program as employees. All right. So, um, why meditate? So, just kind of wanted to bring up this idea for yourself to ask yourselves um there's a lot of reasons to meditate right it might be very relaxing um it might be something that helps us be more present in the moment to be awake in terms of what's actually happening rather than what's going on in our head and the stories that that are going on and those conditioned patterns that that are often uh, playing out those old tapes in a sense. Um, 
And it's the weather analogy is, you know, we, we look inside, we look at the internal weather pattern um, and we just pay attention to what's going on in the, in the mind and the body and the heart to see kind of just checking in, checking in with, with the weather. So that's another reason to meditate, just to be more aware, to have more insight into what's going on internally. Um, which, of course, also leads us to be more aware of what's going on externally, how we respond to what's happening in the world around us, not only at work and our families, but in you know, the, the broader landscape of what's happening in the world, which can, of course, be very troubling at times. Um, but thinking about more basically, when you do stop to sit and meditate and be mindful, what is your intention? And so here are a few things. I'll just put these up. Um, everything from relaxing to gaining insight, increasing our focus. There's lots of benefits that we know that we're cultivating when we do this practice. And that's why they call it a practice, because we're not perfect at it. Um, we can't be, we're never going to be perfect at it, but we can... Um, learn to cultivate these focus, for example. A lot of people talk about being completely distracted by all of the different things that pull our attention, really hijack our attention. There's internal noise, as I mentioned, the stuff that's going on in our heads, and there's external noise. All these things through, through our phones and devices, all these things that hijack our attention. And we can feel very scattered and very much like we have ADHD, correct? So mindful practice can really help us increase our focus and concentration. So that might be one of the reasons why you meditate. So why do you meditate? Think about that. And you might even want to jot down a couple of reasons. Maybe there's something that I haven't listed here. What is it that you get out of this? Why do you do this practice? Why do you keep coming back? And that leads us to our intentions for doing the practice. So just a couple of quotes here from Wayne Dyer. One is Wayne Dyer. Our intention creates our reality. And energy flows where intention goes. So it kind of brings up this whole idea of the difference between intentions and goals or say New Year's resolutions. This is kind of the time of year where we think about this. Resolutions tend to focus on specific goals, you know, maybe wellness goals, maybe eating better or exercising more, whatever it might be. Um, but intention, the difference is the intentions are the ways you want to live your life, that align with your values, kind of how you show up, how you want to show up as you perhaps move towards those goals. But your intentions are more kind of like how you want to be. What's important to you? What's What are your values or the big why behind those goals? And um, in the... Uh, first meditation that we're going to do in, in a moment. Well, I'll give you a little bit of reflection on that. So you'll be able to kind of um, dig into that a little bit deeper. So part of what I found um, in this next slide is a really interesting book uh, called The Power of Meaning by Emily Esfahani Smith. And so I've got a couple of links here. I will send these to you. So there's a TED Talk you want to uh, take a look at that. There's more to life than being happy. And what caught my eye about this is that there's so much in well wellness and well-being circles about being happy. And if you, you know, get any of the newsletters, or, you know, that are that have to do with um, stress and mindfulness and resilience and and well-being, so many of them are focused on what are ways, what are life strategies and tips for living a happy life and it's sort of this 
somewhat elusive way that, you know, how do we, how do we get that? Right. But this book and this, and to be honest, I haven't even uh, gone into these completely yet, but um, did hear one of her talks and she talks about uh, the four pillars of a meaningful life. And so her whole thing is a happy life is a meaningful life or vice versa. A meaningful life is a happy life. And that, that meaning and purpose have much more to do with how we feel about ourselves and what we're, how, as we go through life, as we're going through some of those goals and intentions. And so there are four pillars that she talks about. Um, there is a website that you can check out as well. Uh, and the four pillars, there's actually a quiz on her website, which you can take because whether it's purpose or belonging or transcendence or storytelling, you can take this quiz and you can sort of find out which one is more important to you according to your values, the things that you hold important. And these may change over the course of your life too, by the way. So um, I found it very interesting. I took the quiz myself. It takes about you know five minutes or so. And you get a little bit of an explanation of what your what's your more most important pillar, what's important to you at this stage of your life. So you might want to check that out. And um, so we'll move now to the first meditation. And make sure I got this correctly. Get set for this. Um, the first meditation we're going to do is kind of more on focusing on what is important. What are some of the values that you hold near and dear? And how does that make a difference in terms of uh, those intentions that you might have? Again, the, the why behind the, the New Year's resolutions or the goals that you might have for the coming year. So um, this particular meditation and reflection is based on something I've got from the Shine app, which is I'm actually geared towards women. Um, uh, and my, my colleague Vivian told me about it. And this particular meditation is, is I think, good because what it gets at is um, sort of it gets at the why behind the goals um, and we focus on the root of our visions and desires and resolutions. And in other words, we're getting in touch with how we want to feel. So if you think about, um, you know, a goal that you want to reach, how, if you reach that goal, how would you feel? So what, the author of this meditation does is she writes down her feelings for her goals for the year. So in other words, she takes the list. So, so for example, she uses, I want to feel energized and alive. So I set the goal to move my body more. Or another one is, is I want to feel seen and connected. So I set the goal to pour more energy into my friendships. Or another one is, I want to feel curious and inspired. Um, so I set the goal to travel to a new place. So that's just an example of how we put the feeling part of it first. So each goal is associated with a positive emotional reward. And what's beautiful about this approach is that we don't have to wait until the outer vision or the goal becomes real. We don't have to wait to cross things off our list to feel how we want to feel, we can bring that and we'll do that during the meditation. So we use kind of using the power of imagination. Uh, we're gonna bring that feeling state into mind, okay? So let's begin our first meditation practice. So take a moment to find a comfortable position and start to feel yourself be grounded. So. That might mean feeling your feet connecting you to the ground, that sense of touch and contact through your feet. Or it might be 
the way your body is sitting and that sense of connection, the way the chair supports you. And you can gently close your eyes, or if you prefer, you can softly lower your gaze. Let your spine be long. Let your jaw and shoulders be relaxed. And start to bring some awareness to your breathing. Just notice how the breath feels as it moves through the body. And start to deepen your breath, inviting a sense of calm and deep relaxation into the body. Slow your breathing down. Let each breath move through you like honey. Very good. And just keep breathing slowly and deliberately. Now take a moment to focus on one goal you have for the year ahead. Pick whatever comes to mind first. Just trust the voice of your inner wisdom. And zoom in on that one goal. And take a deep breath here and simply reflect on that goal. But specifically reflect how will it feel when this goal is accomplished? How does the idea of achieving this goal make you feel? Take a moment to name some of the emotions you will feel when this goal is reached. And now take a cleansing breath in through the nose out through the mouth. And with those feelings in mind, what is something small you can do today to start feeling that way? What is one daily practice you can do to let yourself get a taste of those feelings wherever you are in your life right now? And remember, every journey happens one step at a time. Now let's take another deep breath here. Now let's zoom out beyond your goals and think about the year ahead overall and ask yourself, how do I want to feel? The feelings that may come to mind could be just as an example, peaceful, grounded, connected, joyful, at ease, doing something meaningful. And take a moment here to focus on what your inner self wants to experience this year. Give you a moment to do that. This allows us to be sure we're being motivated by our own true desires instead of what family and friends and work and society tell us to want. And before we close here, here are some affirmations you can offer yourself to anchor yourself as the year unfolds. I give myself permission to prior prioritize my feelings. Just sort of say that to yourself again. I give myself permission to prioritize my feelings. I give myself permission to show up as my most authentic self. I give myself permission to show up as my most authentic self. And breathe and Letting them settle into your mind and body. 
give myself permission to prioritize my feelings. And I give myself permission to show up as my most authentic self. All right, beautiful. Now, if your eyes are closed, I invite you to open them right now and let the space around you come back into focus. And I thank you for practicing with me for doing that exercise. And, and just remember, your feelings are your foundations for your goals and for your dreams and visions that you have for yourself. And when we do this, we're really answering the question, why, does, why do these really matter to me? Okay. All right. So very good. So curious to know what that was like for you. If you want to give me some feedback. Feel free to use the chat, or even if you want to speak up, that would be fine as well. Um, but what did you think of that practice? Let me know. And as you do that, I'll pull up this quote. Part of what I realize for myself, and I think for a lot of people, is that it's helpful to bring mindfulness and, and meditative awareness into everyday moments. So this quote here, I'm not sure who it's from, but any moment can be a mindful moment when you give yourself full attention to your senses. Observe the details of your environment visually. Feel the sun on your skin or the wind in your hair. Take in the scents around you. Bringing in the aliveness will quiet the mental noise and leave you refreshed. So that's just kind of one quick, easy, simple way that you can bring mindful awareness into everyday life. It doesn't have to be a formal practice, but, you know, what are you aware of when you're moving around and about your day? All right. Um, so that's the first part. The second part of our time today, I'm going to focus on uh, self-compassion and self-kindness. So as I mentioned in the beginning, kind of bringing up this idea of when you reflect on how you're doing, how are, you, how are you doing with your goals? How are you doing with your meditation and mindfulness practice? You know, noticing what comes up. And what I want you to do is to treat yourself like your best friend. So really bringing this idea of self-compassion into our practice, into our way of doing these mindfulness practices. And... Um, Emma Sapala, who um, uh, is actually quoting um, Kristen Neff's work uh, and her research suggests that replacing self-esteem with self-compassion may have far superior implications for our mental health and well-being. So think about that. I mean, thinking about, um, you know, our, our way of what you might call success or achievement, especially in the Western world, is so so focused on around those achievements and self-esteem. And we don't feel good about ourselves, right, unless we achieve those certain things that society tells us we should be achieving. And I guess I'm sort of saying, let's throw that out the window and focus more on self-compassion. So what do I mean by self-compassion? So this is, again, based on the work of Kristen Neff. So we start with self-kindness. So again, um, being warm and understanding towards ourselves, ourself, especially when we suffer or we're struggling with something. Um, rather than ignoring our pain or um, being immersed in self-criticism, so this may be something to work on. This may be something to first be mindfully aware of. And that's actually the third part is mindfulness. So, I mean, that's an important ingredient. Uh, the second part is common humanity. And all this really means is that we're not alone. Everybody suffers and struggles and go through, goes through difficulties. But when we're in the middle of our own struggles, often it feels like we're alone, right? And often it feels like we're the only one that can really feel like this. So it helps us to remember that 
we all go through this. Being human means, uh, in addition to experiencing some of the joys of life, we're going to experience some of the difficulties and the challenges of life as well. And the sort of the basis of it is our mindfulness practice. And we need to know, or we need to be aware, I should say, of when we're feeling this way. If, if, if that inner critic is coming up as sort of a conditioned response, and we're getting down on ourselves, and we're being hard on ourselves, and we're criticizing ourselves, um, the worst thing to do is to be critical of that self-criticism. <laughs> so it's that mindfulness that we can then be aware of. And we can, um, even when we are aware of some of the pain and the difficulty, and we can feel that compassion for ourselves at the same time. And it means also that we not be over identified with those thoughts and feelings that come up that we can put them in perspective and that we can not get caught up in them and be swept away by the the negativity of them and but i think that's where the practice part comes in with our mindfulness the more we practice it the more we see it for what it really is and we have more control of it in the moment so that we're better able to face it, better able to be accepting of the good, the bad, and the ugly, in a sense. So anyway, it's they all kind of go together. And but I think the mindful practice is really the um, sort of the the gas that powers it all. So this particular quote um, I came across. This also kind of makes sense to me. Um, just that we kind of, it's making space for ourselves. And giving ourselves permission to let go of self-judgment for a few minutes, that's the space. And approach our needs with more compassion. And this really is shown in the research that when we practice self-compassion, we're less likely to feel anxious and stressed we're more likely to feel happy and resilient. Um, and things like our heart rate and reduced inflammation and sleep can be improved. Now, the other part of it, which I think is really important, is it can also get us more open to and receptive to those things that we talked about in the beginning part of today's class. Things that are important to us, things that bring purpose and meaning now that may be other people for a lot of us it means you know our family and our friends and those connections uh, that sense of belonging and so the next practice i wanted to take us through is a loving kindness practice or a meta practice as it's sometimes called and i like this uh, image here of it's from Sharon Salzberg's work. Loving kindness dispels the illusion of us versus them. And basically what we do in the loving kindness practice um, is we repeat phrases. Um, and it's interesting because sometimes we think, well, as we do this, what good is it really doing to kind of repeat phrases, thinking of other people? That's basically what we're going to be doing is we think of other people, we think of ourselves we repeat these kind of phrases to ourselves. And it might seem a little, um, I don't know, even hokey or just sort of rote or like what difference is this really gonna make? But it's very interesting. Even the research shows that these kinds of practices can make a big difference in, in our sense of belonging, in our sense of how we relate to others and that sense of connection. So if this is something that you want to cultivate more of, and this is something that's important to you, um, and I might, again, encourage you to take that quiz uh, from that website that I mentioned before. Um, and you might find that, you know, which of, the, which of the four pillars is your predominant one? But anyway, so we'll do this. Um, I'm going to use, this is based on Tara Brock's work, and it's a 
meta practice with a smile image. And um, we'll use some phrases uh, similar to the ones I just showed you. And um, so first, let's um, find a position that you're comfortable in. Take a moment to adjust yourself so that you feel really comfortable and relaxed, but also so that you can be alert and attentive as we go through this. And maybe starting with a few full deep breaths. And with each in-breath, feeling an opening of receiving the breath. And with our out-breath, a sense of releasing and letting go. more at your own pace, nice full deep breaths, receiving on the in-breath, and letting go and releasing on the out-breath. And in your mind's eye, sense an open sky and imagine and sense the curve of a smile spreading across the sky. And with that, a sense of, of being uplifted, sense of kindliness and friendliness. And imagine and sense that smile spreading through the mind so that you can sense an open, receptive presence in the mind as you feel this curve of the smile spread through the mind and let that spread through the face and the eyes. Let it spread down to the mouth, feeling a slight smile at the mouth, not straining, but just sensing the smile inside the mouth. Let the jaw be relaxed. Let the curve of the smile spread down through the throat and the shoulders, sensing the openness and receptiveness of the smile there. And let that curve of the smile spread to the chest and the heart area, not to cover it over, but to make room for whatever is there an openness, a receptivity. Letting the shoulders relax and the arms and the hands relax. And letting that sense of a smile spread down into the belly, loosening and opening, spreading down through into the pelvic area, the base of the spine down through the legs, and then also back up through the torso and the heart, back up into the, the head and the face. So the whole body is sort of infused with this sense of a friendly smile, receptive, open, vibrant, filled with presence. So in this presence, we'll start the loving kindness practice by bringing to mind someone who is easy to love or care for. Maybe someone who is a benefactor to you, who has given you love and attention and care and help, someone you're grateful to. And take some moments to bring this person that you care about into your mind, in your heart. And just being aware of whatever it is that you appreciate about them. Just sensing that in the body, sensing that gratitude and appreciation. 
and sense whatever blessing you would like to offer to that person. It might be simple. It might be something like, may you be filled with loving presence. May you feel my love and care now. Offering your blessing and imagining that person receiving it and feeling it. You might also offer, may you be peaceful, may you be safe and happy and healthy. May you have moments of happiness and meaning. And sensing this person receiving your care, feeling the bond, the connection, when you offer your care, this sort of field of caring. And from that place of caring, bring your awareness to your own life, your own heart, and take a moment to sense your own being, what you appreciate about yourself. You can do this through your own eyes or through another's eyes, if that's helpful. And as you sense some appreciation of the life that's right here, offer this loving kindness blessing to yourself. May I be filled with loving kindness or presence. May I accept myself just as I am. May I be safe and healthy and happy and have meaning in my life. And in this next few moments of silence, just continue with these phrases, whatever feels right to you. May I accept myself, may I be happy and safe, may I have meaning. Kind of sensing them sinking in as you give yourself these messages of care and compassion. And as a final step, just widening the circle of our loving kindness, bringing to mind a wider circle of friends and family, co-workers, sending them the same messages of care and compassion. Maybe even sending to an even wider circle, including all living beings. May you be safe and healthy and happy May you live with ease. May you find purpose and meaning. And just resting for a last moment before we close today's meditation. And when you're ready, gradually opening the eyes if they've been closed. Maybe taking the last deep breath and kind of reacquainting with your surroundings as we finish that last meditation. And I thank you. I thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you being here. Um, I have a few more slides that I won't really have time to go over. Some, some I just really came across these quotes that I've used before that, that I really like. Um, so as I close and say thank you for joining me today, I'll put these up. There's this one from Pema Chodron. I like this one. It's not about becoming something better. It's about befriending who we already are. Uh, this is a bit longer from Susan Piver. Uh, but this middle bullet, it starts with the assumption that there's nothing wrong with you and that if you relax, you'll see that who you are is completely whole and worthy. 
that's a good message, right? Uh, and then there are some more, uh, there's some videos that you might want to click into, some practices to keep some of this going. There's another quote from Jack Cornfield to kind of remember just that where we are going is here, that any practice is simply a means to open our heart to what is in front of us. Where we already are is the path and the goal. There's a couple more, but I'll say at this point, thank you for joining me. We're just about done with our time and um, hope you can join me for that six week class and um, more than welcome. It'll be great to see you. And uh, um, again, we'll do these. I think I've sent you all the um, invite for the ongoing monthly refreshers. So I see the thanks uh, that you're giving me. I appreciate that. And uh, thank you all again. Appreciate you joining me and being here with me. Take good care.